Hello, I hope you're all well. And yes, I am stretching the truth a little with the title. You can get close to Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic Air 2 stills quality with this technique, but only with some post-processing. The technique is not new. Several still camera manufacturers have utilised it much as the Mavic Air does today. Pixel Shift produces higher resolution images than the sensor could normally achieve by compositing several images. Moving the sensor to uh, get a slightly, very slightly different perspective on each one. Olympus, Sony, Pentax, Panasonic, Fujifilm and Hasselblad have all made still cameras which use this method of moving the sensor to create a higher resolution image. We can emulate this process by compositing several images taken in quick succession on the Mini 2. Natural movement of the aircraft maintaining its position will generate the requisite movement for the sensor. So that's the theory. Let's have a look at what we can expect. First off for reference, let's have a look at this image from the Mavic Pro 2. I'm currently zoomed in at 100%. Now, you should bear in mind that this image was taken at a much greater height and distance than the images that follow from the Mini 2. As we can see, detail levels are really quite high. And there's very, very little noise as we move into the mid-ground of the photo. Again, the detail is still there, still sharp. And if we move into houses in the distance, there's still quite a lot of detail there. And up on to the horizon, we can see it retains its sharpness front to back. The noise levels are well controlled and pretty much probably what we'd expect from an aircraft of this class. Still a consumer product or semi-professional product, but uh, nevertheless, it, uh, it can clearly produce decent quality raw files from its sensor. So onto the Mini 2. Again, this image taken more, more recently, but we can see it actually does quite a good job with the details in the foreground. As we move into the mid-ground again, still not bad. And if we move into the distance, that's where we can start to see a little bit of softness and a little bit of noise creeping in, certainly in the tree area here and the clouds. Perhaps a more useful comparison, if we look at two images, one which has had the super resolution processing, one which hasn't. These two images. see the softness in the distant detail here. Whereas if we look at the image that's had the super res processing, it does display much more detail and much more crispness. As we move down towards the mid ground of the photo, again we can see a lot of detail that's missing is actually present in the super res image. If I move down into the bottom corner of the photograph to the foreground, we can look at the houses down here and see quite a significant difference in the level of detail. So that's straight from camera raw images and again here this time though we've zoomed in using the capability of the Mini 2 to zoom and now it has to be said that it's a digital zoom rather than an optical zoom and as such there is an in inevitable loss of 
detail. Nevertheless, we can see that uh, on the right hand side where the super res image is, there is more detail. Particularly as we move into the mid area of the image here. These houses in particular show quite a significant improvement on the super res image as compared to the straight out of camera. As we move down into the foreground though, the details are less apparent, or well, the improvement should I say are less apparent. They are there, but uh, not, not perhaps as significant as in the further parts of the image. So lastly, let's have a look at a couple of JPEG images, one of which has had the super res process applied to it so that we can see that it actually works on that as well. And again, the same sort of improvements are apparent, particularly if we look at this green or this silo here on conveyor, we can see on the super res image, it's much, much cleaner. The trees in the mid area here are more detailed. And if we move across to these warehouses, again, there's quite a significant improvement in sharpness. There is a downside to this though. Unfortunately with the JPEG image, um, we do seem to see quite a few artifacts. We look at this row of houses here. Obviously quite soft on the straight out of camera image. But when we look at the super res image, although sharper, there are artifacts present. If we move down to the bottom right again towards those houses that we looked at in the previous pair of images, there is again a significant improvement with none of the artifacts. So the super res image does display a much, much sharper output. Let's go through the procedure for creating a super res image. You need a minimum of four images and the upper limits limited by your patience really. That's, uh, that's the only consideration the time it takes to process the image. I'm using Lightroom and Photoshop here as I'm familiar with them, but I'm sure the same technique can be achieved using alternative software. As you've seen the technique can be done with JPEGs, but for the best results I'd really recommend using RAW files. Here we have a selection of eight RAW files which uh, you've seen earlier in the comparison shots, but uh, we'll go through the steps one by one um, as to how best to do this. First off, we'll, uh, we'll select all of these images, there are eight here. It can be done with a minimum of four, but uh, the more, the better the results are, and the slower the time it takes to do it. So we select all of these, and the first step is to right click, go to Edit In, and then we want to select Open as Layers in Photoshop, which hopefully will now transfer these images across into Photoshop. Here we can see the images loading into the layers panel on the bottom right here. And they're sequencing obviously from the highest number to the lowest, so now we have them all loaded, starting with uh, 333 and ending up with 340. So the next thing we want to do is select all of these layers. So with the first one selected, hold shift down and click the last one. Now we have all the layers selected. Now we want to go and resize the images, so to do this we go to Image and Image Size. Which opens this panel. Now, we can mess around here, um, feel free to change anything that you, you fancy changing, but I've found a good result can be found by going to 200%. and changing the resample mode to nearest neighbor hard edges and hit OK. This will normally take a while. So I'll speed the footage up just to, uh, to save you having to wait with me. OK, 
Okay, so that's now completed. We'll, uh, we'll zoom back out so that we see the whole image in the screen again. And the next step will be to align the images. So for this, we need to go to Edit and then Auto Align. So in the menu here, Edit and Auto Align Layers. And we want to make sure here that we've got Vignette Removal unchecked and Geometric Distortion unchecked. Automatic is normally perfectly fine for doing this because we're not taking a panoramic shot. We're just trying to align the different layers together. Once again, this is quite a slow process, so uh, we'll speed things up for you. Okay, so that's now complete. The next step, um, basically we want to average the opacity of the layers. So there are two ways of doing this. The more convoluted is to take the first layer as we see at the top here, 333. Three, three. And we'll set that to 100%. Next layer down, 334, three, we would set to 50%. The third layer down, we would set to 25%, and so on and so forth until we get to the bottom. So as you can see, that would obviously be quite a long process. So the technique that I use, which does depend on having a reasonably powerful computer, is to go into Layer, Smart Objects and Convert to Smart Objects. So Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object with all the layers on the right selected. Once again, this will take a while for the, uh, the machine to process. Okay, it's now completed that. Now we can see in the layers panel on the bottom right, we effectively only have one item showing, which is the smart object. The second part of this step is to change the stack mode for the smart object. So once again, we're going to uh, layer, smart objects. This time we want to select stack mode down at the bottom here and we want to select median, which is averaging out the layers. As I say, this is the uh, the alternative method to going through each image one by one and modifying the opacity. Okay, now that step's complete, we can now sharpen the image. So we're going to go up to filters, filter, Sharpen, and we're going to go for s Smart Sharpen. Okay, so the settings I like to use here is for the amount to be 200% and the radius to be 2 pixels. No need to change any of the other parameters and we hit OK. So with that complete, we can now flatten the image, so layer and flatten the image. Now we can finally resize it back down. You can leave it at this size that it's at, but obviously it's going to take a large amount of uh, drive space up, especially if you do this on a regular basis. So what I like to do here is resize again. So we're going to go image, image size. This time we're going to change it to 50%. going to change the resampling mode or method to by cubic and hit OK. So that should be now our uh, super resolution image. So let's have a look at it full size. And we can see we've got a large amount of detail in there. in the cloud has been reduced. So we'll save this and pop back into Lightroom and have a look and compare it to the one of the originals. We'll close
is this just to save a little bit of memory? And move back across to Lightroom. Now we can see here it's popped it in for some reason out of sequence, but uh, it's created a tagged image format based on 333, which is the first image here. So if we compare these two side by side, we should hopefully be able to see the difference. zoom into 100% and let's have a look at the uh, the foreground area and I think it's fairly safe to say there that uh, both the noise levels and the sharpness have improved let's move up into the uh, core area up at the top and again once again we can see the snow has a much more crisp appearance. The detail in the buildings here is sharper and this communications mast oops, definitely looks better. Everything's a little bit more crisp. So that's the process completed. You can now edit the image to your particular requirements. In this instance I would need to straighten the horizon a little bit, bring the sky out a little bit, and maybe reduce the contrast, but essentially you've got a much better image to play with than you had in the first place.